Hello friends, in this lecture we are going to study about a problem that is known as satisfiability problem and we would like to show that this problem is NP complete. So what is Boolean satisfiability problem? So you are given a Boolean expression, Boolean variables are basically variables which has values either 0 or 1. So given a Boolean expression written using AND, OR, NOT, implication and if and only if of variables, of Boolean variables, we have to determine if there is any assignment of those variables such that the formula is a boolean expression is true or it is satisfied okay so here what we mean so this is x1 and x2 are our variables then x1 if we have a function like this x1 and then or x2 and not of x3 okay something like this so if we have let's say x1 is equal to 1 x2 is equal to 1 and x3 is equal to 0 what will happen is your phi will be satisfied because 1 odd with 1 and ended with 0 bar negation of 0 will be equal to 1 so this tells that you will be having several boolean variables and they will the operators will be and not or implication and if and only if okay so we have this expression for and this is for or not we use this before a symbol not x implication like this a implies b if and only if a is we do like this a is true only if b is true and b is true if and only if a is true okay so something like this so example also is given here so we have a b c are three boolean variables okay so now let's try to see does this function boolean function have the satisfiability condition okay so is it satisfiable so if we take a is one b is 1 and c is 1 the formula is satisfied let's try to check it out okay so 1 odd with 1 then we end with 1 odd with 0 then ended with 0 odd with 1 ended with 0 odd with 1 okay so this is 1 odd with 1 is 1 ended with 1 because 1 odd with 0 is 1 0 and 1 ended with 1 ended with 1 so this becomes equal to 1 so this is satisfied but if we have something like this in this case f is not satisfied for any variable assignment okay so in this case it says that f cannot be satisfied using any variable so for example if we have again a is 1 b is 1 c is 1 the it is not going to be satisfied so 1 odd with 1 ended with 1 odd with 0 okay ended with 0 odd with 1 ended with 0 odd with 0 so this expression is gives us 0 all others are 1 but because we are ending we will get a 0 okay so this is never going to be satisfied so boolean satisfiability asks that is this can we find solution to this problem okay so now if we put all these if we have let's say x1 x2 x3 till x and n variables are there then and these values can be 0 or 1 okay so 0 1 0 1 0 1 0 1 so they we have how many possibilities each one of them two so two to the power of n possibilities are there so this becomes an exponential algorithm is needed to find if there is any assignment that will make this satisfied okay so this 
tells now we have to prove that this problem is NP complete okay so let's try to prove this out so how we will prove so let's try to see satisfiability is NP complete so to prove any problem that is NP complete first we need to show that it is in NP and it means what this problems given a satisfying assignment okay so it tells us that if you are given some satisfying argument x1 x2 x3 till xn are given like 101 1, something like this so now verifying whether this formula is satisfiable can be done in polynomial time okay very easily you can put all those variables okay and if there are n variables m expressions it can be done in for loop simple for loop so o of n plus m kind of thing okay satisfiability is np hard to prove that we need to show that okay we already know that we can take already known np complete problem like circuit satisfiability problem and we can show that we can reduce this problem into satisfiability problem it means what any instance of circuit satisfiability we can always use reduce it to a satisfiability problem in polynomial time okay so you will be given let's say that we have some magic box where you give some input then it can easily find for you that okay can it have a satisfiable argument okay assignment so now what we do we say that okay we have a circuit satisfiability problem and its input will be a circuit and we say that we can transform the input to circuit satisfiability to an input to satisfiability problem and this should be done in polynomial time okay and then if this what happens now if this is satisfiable the input to this one after changing then this is also satisfiable and if this is not satisfiable then the circuit is also not satisfiable so we have to prove this so let's try to see how we prove so sat is np complete so any instance of circuit satisfiability can be reduced in polynomial time to an instance of formula satisfiability so you are given a circuit so I say that if you give me any instance of a circuit satisfiability problem, I can reduce it to a poly to a formula satisfiability instance. So instance means here an input. So you can map the input of circuit satisfiability to an input of formula satisfiability and that mapping should be very important. It should be in polynomial time. Okay. So what we do okay so let's try to see what we do here is that we make some reduction and what is that reduction let's try to look from here so if you are given a circuit okay so this is a circuit satisfiability problem so you are given a circuit here and then you are asked that okay x1 x2 x3 are input to this this so is this circuit satisfiable for any assignment of x1 x2 all these inputs so now to change this problem and bring it into a formula what we can do is we can write like an inductive method we can take we want to basically convert this circuit into a formula so x10 is the output here i can now write it as let's see as x7 ended with x7 ended with x8 x9 i can write like this this is my first step but now x7 itself is x1 x2 and x4 they are ended so this i write and then it becomes x7 is done x8 your x8 is 
x5 odd with x6 so this is done here and your x9 is nothing but x6 odd with x7 so we get these three now what happens is we now again try to expand okay so x1 x2 are fine x4 is x3 negation we write here then x6 and x5 so x6 if you see its negation of x4 and x5 is nothing but x1 odd with x2 then you have x6 x6 and x7 so x6 is not of x4 and x7 is x4 or added with x1 and x2 and you keep on going recursively like this and then again we see that changing this phi the circuit into a function boolean function is it becomes exponential okay so this reduction is not good because the mapping of the circuit to a formula the mapping itself an instance of circuit satisfiability to a formula satisfiability it becomes exponential so i cannot reduce use this for reduction because this is exponential time algorithm okay so what we do but we can do something else we can say that okay x10 here we will use what is known as if and only if what is the table for this you have x if and only if y is true if we have so x is true then y is true if and only if y is true y is true if and only if x is true so if x and y are here if 1 1 1 0 0 1 0 0 so what should be the output of this so x if and only if so if x is 1 then y is 1 this is fine if and only if so this is true x is true then y is true okay so like this x is 0 then y is 0 x is 1 then y is 0 is not possible this is false x is 0 then y is 1 is also false okay so these two are true so this is the if and only if x is true if and only if y is true so if we do like this so what it means now is that x10 i can write like this for just this particular circuit if i see i can write x10 if and only if x8 ended with x9 ended with x7 okay so x10 is true if and only if x10 if and only if x8 ended with x9 ended with x7 so i can write here x10 and then i will take all so each of the circuit let's now look in the here okay so what happens now so for each what is the reduction step for each wire xi is of c the circuit give a variable xi in the formula so each get gate can be expressed as an if and only if so let's take take one example so this is the example here again the same example so what happens here is let's try to see so what they do is x phi is x10 so phi itself is a and of several clauses okay so phi is x10 okay phi will be true if x10 is true ended with x10 if and only if x10 is now what it is x7 ended with x8 ended with x9 so x10 will be true if and only if x7 x8 ended with x9 now if and only if this 
now this is again ended with again what is the circuit here x9 your x9 is x6 odd with x7 so x9 if and only if x6 and x7 so this is a way of writing for a particular let's say a boolean circuit okay so this circuit will be output is x set and this will be true if and only if x5 and odd with x6 is true okay so something like this so x9 okay so x6 odd with x7 so next we have x8 for example if and only if x5 and x6 so this tells just nothing but that okay this output x8 is nothing but x5 odd with x6 so i write like this the whole circuit x7 your x7 is x1 ended with x2 ended with x4 so x7 if and only if x1 ended with x2 ended with x4 so like this we write so now we reduce the circuit into a formula like this now we say that circuit okay so let's try to see what it says so correctness it tries to prove the correctness so correctness of reduction so it says that clearly the reduction can be done in polynomial time that is true so some background noise is there but i cannot help about it okay so reduction can be done in polynomial time that is true we can see the circuit and we can write that phi the formula in polynomial time and when the circuit is satisfiable if and only if phi is satisfiable so if circuit is satisfied if and if phi is satisfied and if phi is satisfied then only circuit is satisfied so if c is satisfiable if the circuit is satisfiable then what it means then there is a satisfying assignment is there okay so there are inputs that make it assignment satisfying this means that each wire of c has a well defined value and the output of c is 1 okay so the assignment of the va values in value of phi make clause 1 okay the reverse proof can be also done in the same way so let's try to look a bit so what happens here so it says we can write like this the formula for the circuit is now reduced into this so now if circuit has some values such that x10 becomes 1 so what it tells that if circuit has such assignment then what will happen this will also be 1 why so because x5 is a and so there are so many and clauses are there here and x10 will become because from the circuit if output x10 is 1 so this will become 1 and these all are basically the properties of the gates okay so when x7 ended with x8 ended with x9 they are that is equal to x10 so this if and only if this so this will also become 1 this will also become 1 this will also become 1 all others will become 1 so 5 will be 1 if x10 is 1 similarly if this is satisfied then it means what all the gates are of course working properly and x10 is 1 okay so that's why this circuit will be satisfiable so this proves that the satisfiability problem is np complete